was carrying that um, sense of discovery of beauty that you get as a kid, carrying that into our adult lives and making a job for ourselves. We used our arts background and our business background and carried it forward and gave it a shot. Opened the store December 6th, I think it was, 1971. And that was our first exhibit in 72, was Byron with his watercolors, having this idea of showing um, just a one-person artist and launching a full exhibit, having an opening reception, having food, inviting community in. A show will end on a Sunday. The artist will pick up Monday. Then we will strip the room, put all of the sculpture stands in the middle of the room so we're dealing with bare walls. Then we have to patch the wall, repaint the wall. Then the new artist comes in Monday afternoon, delivers, and then it's like a puzzle. We're laying things out, we're changing our minds, all of the staff will come in and give an opinion, uh, and then we uh, walk away and leave it to Kristen, who hangs it all. It is easier when it's a solo show, just because of course the artist's style is usually pretty contained and um, a lot of times they'll work within kind of, not so much a theme, but it's one suite of work that they've been working on together, so it automatically kind of um, works as a grouping. Uh, but with an artist like Marilyn Frasca, she actually prefers not to have any 3D art in the room, so it will just be her work what height we like to hang work at, how to figure out as far as um, the math of measuring the piece and measuring um, the hanging system on the back and how that figured into figuring out exactly where to put that nail on the wall. For me at least, um, I know everyone learns differently, but it was something that I just learned hands on. Kind of something that you just organically figure out once you have all the work in front of you. And some shows are more difficult than others and you really do end up switching things around a lot. You, I've rehung um, shows before or parts of shows because once you do have them on the wall, it just doesn't fit right. You're not really trying to add anything to the artist's work. You're just trying to make sure that nothing we do takes away from it. And the artists do, for the most part, entirely on framing and um, doing all the wiring, etc., and the hanging systems on the back, and that can vary greatly between artists as well as greatly between pieces that an artist brings. It's a rare thing when we get pieces from one artist and they're all hung exactly the same with the wire on the back, and I'm always, oh, yay. It, it's try to make sure it's level and that you're using something that it's going to keep it on the wall securely, which is, you know, one of our concerns is that they're all safe and stable for the entire time they're here. There's never any way of knowing what's going to sell and what's not going to sell. Uh, when it comes to differing opinions as far as how to hang a show or, you know, as long as there is no really strong reason not to, I'd say that we probably would lean towards doing what the artist wants just because you do want them to be happy and they know their work better than we do. So um, I think that I would defer to that. But again, it's, you know, it's partially about making sure that you're making the artist happy, that their vision for what the show and what their artwork is, is going to be is uh, realized. Uh, this, Olympia is a great area for the arts. We have a really strong arts community. Um, you know, there's a long history of, um, you know, obviously this, the Childhood Zen Gallery has been around since, you know, 1971. Um, people come when they're in town to visit us from other places and they're just amazed that this, that, you know, the gallery is, has lasted that long.
the idea of being an artist was never in my mind. I never thought of art as a profession, and even till this day, I have trouble um, thinking of myself as an artist. I, I think of myself as somebody who draws, who loves to make prints, who... Uh, Rishenda seems to know that about me. She is somebody who respects the fact that uh, I do my work and I do it for a variety of reasons. And um, she says from time to time, what do you think, Marilyn? Do you want to have a show? And I say, this seems like a good time or no, maybe in a couple of years or so Childhood Zen Gallery uh, has been very kind to local artists and I, uh, now that I am 80, I am very happy to have a very relaxed place to work and a wonderful atmosphere and relationship with um, Rishenda, Bill, and their staff. But no, the body of work is always a body of work. There's never a special body of work. And this is the book for the show that's coming up in October. Uh, the order I'm trying to establish now is on the on the board in the uh, in the sunroom because that's. That's a marquette, a maquette that I try to give to Kristen. So what one needs to do in building an exhibition is to create a community of images that inform one another so that a common feeling is created. Uh, Rishenda has a business and it's not just a gallery, it's a shop and she needs to have an income and she has a staff and she knows a balance between having shows where maybe work won't sell and having shows that incorporate a lot of different artists, sculptors and printmakers and pottery and furniture and so on and it tends to be more of a place to shop and people find these gorgeous things I met Joe Federson, um, who taught at Evergreen, great printmaker, and he said, you know, Marilyn, you can make textures with a print. You don't have to do all this. And I loved them, and I would look at them, and I'd see things, and I'd say, oh my God. So they would look kind of like this, and I would see things, you know, and I would just say, okay, that's a, these are, this is a hand, this is the other hand, here's one hand, here's a head, here's a little nose and a mouth. I mean, this is, who is that? Hello? And then I'd kind of go into it as a, and draw it and find it and till this day that's that's the process I make a print I use a variety of tools to make a different kinds of textures I use inks different inks and I run it through a press and I make one print and then that's the print that I let dry and that's the print that I work with but it's almost like a, a contract I have with my drawings if you see it you have to draw it Otherwise, we're not going to show you anything anymore. And I, I'm telling you, I had that experience once. I said, I'm not doing that. And the whole drawing disappeared. I could not find it anymore. But I did the basket. It took me weeks. I did each little thing. and But inside the basket was still a unknown texture. I left it for a month, came back, and it was a seagull. And I thought, oh, this is going to be the silliest drawing I've ever made. Here's the Dalai Lama with a basket on his lap, and in the basket is a seagull. I think that sometimes the pictures are, I'm making are not for me. I don't know who they're for, but they do find homes. People, people know that, that this belongs to them. It's almost as if I, I had them for a while, and then they have to get to where they belong. Uh, the only way to do that is to have an exhibit so people can choose them. There is an interconnected uh, source of energy, imagery, uh, need I say love, that connects all people. And that is a place that I feel that um, I dip into for whatever reason. And it's really a joy to, to have someone be connected to it. I continued around the room and I, and I finally came up to the, 
kind of where I should have started at, but there was somebody standing there initially. And I, I came up to a piece called Plain Air that she had just done this, this year. And for some reason, it, it really spoke to me. This town, Olympia, it is an amazing place. Uh, it's an amazing place because somehow the arts find a role inside the culture of this town. The arts in Olympia seem to have an integrity and an intelligence that you won't find in a town this size. Uh, anyway, that's it. Olympia, yes. Yay! <laughs>
started fiber infusing my canvases, hand stitching nylon thread in my canvas and creating fine detail and a texture there that's kind of a surprise. It's really been fun to fiber infuse my 2D work. I'm an avid swimmer, so part of my inspiration comes while I'm swimming. So I think about my work while I'm doing that. A lot of my inspiration comes from nature and being outside. Over the years, I have realized that my textiles influence my mixed media paintings and my mixed media paintings influence my textiles. That can be from color choice to texture and kind of patterns that are used, but definitely influence each other. I hand weave and design and draft. Everything is made by me on my loom. There's no two pieces that are alike. I like to use natural fibers and each piece is one of a kind and wearable work. I weave scarves and shawls, kind of big ponchos. This is one of my favorite pieces I've made. I can't find this yarn again. There's a lot of texture to it. When I begin the weaving process, the first thing I have to do is wind a warp. So I'm looking at my cone yarn at that point and choosing colors for the base of the piece. Winding a warp takes hours. The next process is putting it on the loom, winding it on the back beam putting it through the heddles, threading it, and then the weaving process begins. Weaving is very, very time consuming. There's a lot of repetition, a lot of attention to fine detail, and not a lot of room for error, but I've been weaving for 30 years. My favorite step in the weaving process is kind of determining the warp and also an idea of what I'm gonna be making, whether it's shawls or scarves, colors. I pay attention to trending color palettes and it's wearable art. I have lived in Olympia since 2005. When I moved to Olympia, I became the artist in residence at uh, Garfield Elementary for about five years. Did after school programs for all the students and worked in all the classrooms. I also participated in Arts Walk for multiple years and was actually the Arts Walk cover artist in 2010. Having my career choice in art is challenging. Um, I travel out of the state to show my work in both textile design and paintings at art festivals and art shows um, and actually have trunk shows as well. As an artist, it's important for a community to support the local arts. Olympia has a few platforms for that each year. Anytime people give feedback to artists, we love it. People coming into our studios and checking in on what we're doing and having conversations with us about why we make our work or what we're doing is really, really encouraging for us as, as makers and creators. And when people support us, it's really great because they're, they're kind of supporting our, our work, which is adding value to what we're doing. I feel that art is important in everybody's lives. I also feel that everybody has a form of artistic quality to them. They just have to figure out what it is. There's art everywhere. You just have to see it before you can start making it. Welcome to Artists Among Us. We are your host tonight. My name is Jeff Barahan. And I'm Kathy Strauss. We are artists, filmmakers, storytellers, and well, what else are we? Well, we're also members of the Olympia Film Collective, a filmmaking organization dedicated to promoting independent film in the South Sound. That's right. Only Film, well, as we like to affectionately call it, has a goal of uh, increasing the role of women and be a POC in the film industry. And that is especially important to me as one of our events is making a short film with our local indigenous youth at the Intertribal Youth Film Project each year. Yeah, that's a super fun one. But I mean, not only do we make short films, we also have support groups such as the screenwriting group that writes films and a documentary group that documents life in the South Sound. Which brings us to tonight's event. 
chapter one in the Artists Among Us project. So the only film documentary group really decided we wanted to do a group project. And we decided to do this, we, we picked a theme and it was arts in Thurston County. So all of the filmmakers made a short documentary about the arts. Obviously with art as the theme, this event was to coincide with Olympia's uh, Spring Arts Walk. We had big plans to rent a space and make a big to-do, but the pandemic struck, thanks a lot, Rona, and like everything else, we had to move online. Boo. <laughs> but we're making the best of it, right? So from now until October 21st, we'll showcase two documentaries each month on the third Wednesday of the month, and what you just watched represents the worldwide debut of two documentary films. The first was by Bill Lang, and the second was by Jordy Simpson and Grayson Bayer, who are here with us tonight. So welcome to you filmmakers. Welcome. We also have one of the featured artists, Julie Simpson. Hi. Uh, hi, Julie. Hi. Welcome, everybody, to the show. Welcome, everyone. So, Bill, uh, you were first up. Um, the uh, building an art exhibition. I mean, that is a wild topic. When I first if I think about making a documentary about art, I think about an artist. But you actually showed the art behind the art process. I mean, why did you film or choose that, uh, that subject matter? Well, I was uh, very curious about the process uh, because the context of where you see art and how you see art influences Hey, Bill, while you take a look at your audio, let's go ahead and kind of ask a question of Grayson and Jordy. Okay, I will jump in there. And first of all, I brought a mocktail along to toast the two of you. Congratulations. They, um, Grayson and Jordy just graduated from Capitol High School. So probably the strangest year of high school, senior year ever in history. And I commend you for making it through, and I hope that whatever your plans are go well. Anyway, um, we're glad to have you here and wondered if you could just start off, um, I'll start with you, Grayson. Maybe you can start us and tell us how the two of you got in the film. I mean, you can speak for yourself or both of you, however you want. Go for yeah, it. Yeah, sure. Um, so thank you, first of all, for, um, for the thing you said about our senior year. Um, but yeah, so I've always loved film. I've always loved watching movies. I think when I got to high school and saw film as a potential career path and saw my peers actually considering it as their future, I think that really inspired me to get into film. And so I took a film class at Capitol High School and my film teacher, Scott LaDuc, he introduced Jordy and I into our first film competition at All Girls Film Festival. And so we submitted a film and we were featured at that festival. And ever since then, we've both been making films and love every second of it. Awesome, awesome. Do you wanna to respond to that at all, Jordy, that same question? Um, sure. Uh, thank you again, Kathy, for introducing us as well. Um, I'd say Grace and I both have had kind of a task with photography as well. Um, and we still experiment on that on our own. But I think that greatly impacted our interest um, in media and then furthering our career then towards film with the class that we took together the past two years as well. So it's been a great experience so far and we're excited to keep doing it in the future. Awesome. Yeah. I have a question for you. Well, actually I see Jordy Simpson and Julie Simpson, you are related. We are. You are. How's that? I, she is my daughter. <laughs> and how is it working with your mom, Jordy? Um, it was really awesome. Um, I've grown up with her, obviously, um, because she's my mom. But she has really instilled a lot of creativity throughout the household um, and always supported art and artistic um, interests. And so it was really amazing to kind of fuse our creativity together. Grayson and I um, with our film interests, and then of course my mom with her career as an actual artist. So it was really amazing kind of to combine those two into the documentary. Cool. Awesome. Should we check back in with Bill and see? Bill, give us a little. Yeah, let me know, let me oh. know if this works out. Yes. Sound okay. good. I can hear okay. you. Okay, sorry about that. 
So let's uh, go back to Bill. Bill, so we, I was asking you about uh, the subject matter. Uh, you started off uh, showcasing the art installation and really uh, it was amazing to see Kristen and all those calculations she was doing for like, I swear it was like probably 50 paintings she had to hang, but just seeing the behind the scenes of how an exhibit comes about, I thought that was fascinating. Uh, but why did you choose to lead off with that? So, um I enjoy art. I've interviewed many, many artists, and uh, I'm always curious about how the art is exhibited. And the exhibition, or how you, uh, w how you see the image, uh, communicates a totally different perception. So um, putting a, an, a piece of art in a gallery is gives you one perception. Seeing a piece of art on a book page is another. Seeing an art in a museum is another. Seeing an art on uh, the outside is another. It's the same piece of art, but um, where it's at makes all the difference on how you see it. So I wanted to see how the pros um, do it, and that's what Childhood's End did. One of the uh, questions that's often asked of all filmmakers is, um what was your greatest challenge? Uh, you know, in filmmaking, it's not easy. Um, you set out to do one thing, you end up with another. There are different phases of production. Um, so how did you guys handle your obstacles? What challenges did you face making these documentaries? So one of the biggest challenges was uh, filming the opening night. Uh, the opening night uh, for an exhibition is the artist night. This is when the most people come to see the art meet the artists, et cetera. And so the challenge was, how do I film this interaction of the audience, the people that come to see it and the artists without being intrusive? And it's so, you know, as you saw, it's a crowded room with lots of people in it. So um, I, you know, so that was like, what, how am I gonna do this, okay? And so what I did is I went outside and put my phone up against the window and uh, then filmed it and then did a time lapse. So, and, and I think that was very effective because it showed the movement, it showed the interaction, um, et cetera. Yeah. That's great. That's great. Oh, there it is. That's, we can actually ask the same question of uh, Jordy and Grayson. What were your challenges? Um, I'd say, I think it was kind of one of my favorite parts of the process, but it was also kind of a challenge. Um, Grayson and I most of the time work with narrative film or just kind of short films. Um, and so it was an interesting new challenge to work in the documentary genre instead. Um, but it was something I ended up really enjoying as well. What about you, Grayson? I think one of the hardest parts was coming up with questions that would uh, spark the answers that we wanted to, that we wanted Julie to kind of answer with and make it all flow together. And so I think uh, just coming up with those, per those right questions to make everything flow and to get the right answers as well. That's definitely a skill, learning to interview people and to get them to be comfortable and you know so that they're willing to open up and, and tell a little bit more than than you thought they would so good job on that yeah i have a question for julie along those lines so you know artists tend to be you're kind of behind the scenes um so they it, obviously these two spent a lot of time filming you and wonder how that was for you in terms of your process and you have any comments on that i enjoyed the process um, I think it, we spent hours that day together, um, moved around to different parts of the studio. So it was really fun for me to just experience and watch them um, film my work. So it was really, I really enjoyed it. Um, very proud of their work that they did. And I think it would be, I mean, it's kind of the elephant in the room, but how are things now with the pandemic as a working artist who usually goes to a lot of shows and and really it applies to everybody on this on this panel because we're all creative people and our lives are dramatically changed but i'd like to hear from you julie if you don't mind 
And maybe what you've heard from other folks who are artists, working artists. Yes, I do travel around the country and it's been interesting because it feels like each I hear something new about what's happened towards part of the year. And everything has been uh, art shows too, too many people traveling under this pandemic that they the year. Um, so I'm working on projects at home and um, working on my website, my online store, and have um, lots of fun with uh, just making new work right now. Hey, um, I have a question for Bill. Uh, Bill, um, Marilyn, you showcased her art so well. I mean, it was really enjoyable to see her paintings um, in, in your doc. Um, but at the same, she's she's so good. At, were you at all? Um, how did how did her, I guess her art or discussion of art influence the way you put together the documentary? Um. I've interviewed a number of different artists, and um, there's a lot of things that are very, very similar. And one of the stories that she was able to articulate very, very well is that the piece, uh, the painting, the drawing, uh, whatever the artist is creating, talks to the artist, and you have to listen to it. And she made this point where, you know, the, the piece said there was something in the art and if, and she goes no i can't put that in and if she didn't put it in then the whole image the whole picture everything went away um and i've had a number of artists tell me the same thing it's like you know there's this these two sides that uh that they compete with um there's the emotional feeling side and the intellectual side and if the emotional side um doesn't win, then um, the piece never gets completed or they'll add, you know, they'll t add two more strokes and that will destroy the painting and they'll have to throw it out. So she was able to articulate um, what happens internally to a bunch of artists. Can you relate to that, Julie? Is that Very much. I've been known, I paint over paintings sometimes if I've, if I've, if they've been in my, my, my collection too long. Yes, okay. I definitely agree with uh -huh. that. So, yeah. It's a learning experience, you know, as an artist, uh, you're never almost, you're never really satisfied almost. There's always something you wish you could have done better, right? Is there anything about your docs or anything you wanna, you wish you could have done better? Or differently? Or differently, yeah. Well, you know, so the, the, the cliche is, is that you're never done editing. You just choose a place to stop. And, um, and you know, that's the hardest part is when do you stop the tweaking? So, you know, I could go back to the, I could go back to this movie and spend the next six months editing if I wanted to. So, but it's like, you just choose, choose to learn from what uh, you did at that, with that particular piece and go on to the next piece. I definitely agree with you, though, for sure. In editing, it's kind of like, okay, when when should we stop? And I think having the uh, Oli Film Collective group and the documentary meetings is really helpful to kind of organize the timeline of, okay, here's when we need it submitted by, and okay, we'll be good for now. And so um, it's definitely that process of ending editing and just collaborating. I also, speaking about the Olympia Film uh, Documentary Group, it was so helpful to get feedback from them and really helped us guide what story we wanted to tell and show and how to do so. Yeah, we really should uh, thank uh, Bill. I mean, we have Bill and Kathy here and Misael Martinez who actually uh, produced this particular show, um, got us online, got us streaming, um, but they were uh, instrumental in uh, kicking this documentary group effort off, um, artists among us. So thanks a lot, Bill. Kathy, since you're both here. It's not exactly what we envisioned, but it's, <laughs> it's nice to be able to have a forum. 
It looks like we have a question that's come in over Facebook. Jeff, do you want to grab that? What tips would uh, Bill, Grayson, and Jordy give to first-time filmmakers? So I'll jump in. Um, my advice is to just do it. You know, you will constantly be honing your skills, uh, but reading about it uh, is not going to help. Okay, going to classes uh, is not going to help. Okay? Well, it helps. What you, what you have to what you have to do is you have to do it. You have to make the mistakes. You have to do the the good things and the bad things and see what happens and then learn from those, those, those experiences and go on to the next one. Don't wait until you got everything lined up. Just do it. How about you too, Grayson and Jordy? Any comments? Oops, you're, I can't, I can't oh, hear you. Sorry. There you go. Definitely to add on to what Bill was saying as well. Um, I'd say just the hands-on experience is really important, but I'd also say having uh, collaboration or inspiration is really vital as well throughout the process. Um, I know Grayson um, has helped me as an individual, and we definitely help each other through our collaboration, um, but also seeking inspiration and uh, seeking ideas from other filmmakers um, to kind of help your process and tone in on like what you enjoy and um, through gaining that experience as well is really wonderful. You actually answered one of my questions because a lot of times documentary documentarians work alone, uh, but you two came as a team. Like, did that just start from a friendship? How did that? How did that get going? Um, that I think that came from being in film class together. I think we really just. I think we collaborated really well, and we just. I think we, her strengths complemented my weaknesses and vice versa. And so I think we also, again, I mentioned it before, but we started at All Girls Film Festival and we were the two in the class who wanted to go with it. And so from then on, we have just been making films since. And um, to go on the question of uh, what I would recommend to, younger filmmakers who want to start out, I would say just again, back to that film class, use your resources. I mean, one of our resources was a film class at Capitol High School and we created a connection with uh, multiple festivals around the area and with Scott LaDuke who supplied us with equipment and we created this uh, fantastic connection that we I'm super grateful for uh, with Jordy and with the many groups around Olympia and, and throughout Washington. So so, yeah, use your resources. Well. So it sounds like maybe you'll both continue making films as you go. Hopefully. On. Yeah, definitely. I hope so. So what's next for you three? What's your next project? Well, currently we're working on a series oh. where we're um, kind of taking inspiration from different film directors. So right now we're working on a film that's influenced by Hitchcock. And so... Yeah. Great. Bill, what's next? I've got, yeah, I've got multiple projects working. Um, and so uh, a lot of my uh, projects involve musicians as an artist. And um, with COVID, uh, musicians don't have an audience. An audience can't get up close and personal to the musicians. So uh, my next big project is going to be uh, adding um, high production values of good sound and multiple cameras to musical live streaming performances. Hmm. Great. It looks like we have another um, online submission question. Um, Kathy, you want to take this one? This is from Seattle Documentary Association, CDOC. Thanks so much for this talk. Is there anything you all at Oli Film Collective, filmmakers on this panel, would wish from the film community in the region? Anybody want to take a stab at that one? Um, sure. I would just like to say that I think film and all art in general, which is why this was such an amazing opportunity to be a part of, um, I would say all art and film is a great uh, platform for this as well, but can really just send a message. And so I think um, right now in our country, there's a lot of unrest and a lot of uh, tension going on. And so I'd say that 
film is a great way for people to express their ideas and share uh, information to others and just get information out and get messages to other people. So I think it's a awesome platform for that. And so I think if more people could get involved within the region, that'd be amazing for sure. Definitely. Uh, Jordy and Grayson, you chose to end on a quote uh, from your, well, your, your mother or subject, I should say. Uh -huh. uh, um, but you said that people just need to see it. Uh, something along that along those lines. But that stuck in my in my in my head when I was watching your documentary. Um, and, and it's completely true. Um, we need to be able to see this, see these things that we that we make. And this is the point of, of being here that, you know, as a group, the artists among us were showcasing uh, some of these documentaries that are made by our newcomers. Um, by our veterans, you know, and this is it's, it's a really great opportunity to, to see it. And, and thanks to everybody for tuning in and, and watching and participating too. Um, you're right, we need participation, we need collective participation, and that is the point of the Olympia Film Collective. And supporting this series supports filmmakers too. And, and as we said, we're gonna, every, every month for the next three months, we're going to have two, I think we're going to have three films the last month in October. Um, and so we'd love to see you back here. If you want to learn more about the artists, I know in this case you can, um, this is one of the questions that came in, where can we learn more about the artists featured in this doc? Maybe we could put, um, I don't know if we can do that, Misa, put their websites up on the monitor. Um, and the next two documentaries, drum roll, Jeff. Well, local, the next, uh, let's see, August 19th, we're gonna have two more doc, doc, docs, uh, one about the local uh, comedians in Olympia, and also the other is about the art of Don Frias. So we're taking sort of a broad approach to the arts, and um, I think you'll find we've got a pretty diverse set of films and filmmakers and we hope you'll we'll see you again any last statements <laughs> from the artist uh, thank you so much for having us really appreciate this opportunity and the and really appreciate the opportunity to show our artwork as well as a local artist so thank you for this opportunity so glad to yeah. have you here yeah yeah this was yeah. fun and the tr excuse me, the trailers for the next two movies will be will start streaming immediately on our Facebook page, and this this whole program, the films, and the Q and A will be up for a week. We decided we're not going to leave things up permanently because we still hold out hope that eventually we'll be able to do a premiere on a big screen. So we're going to keep it somewhat private for now. Not private, but. Yeah. Keep some control of it. Well, this has been great. Thank you so much, everybody, for tuning in. Um, and thank you all to our, our participants for showcasing your wonderful subjects through your own personal lenses. Um, it's been a joy and a pleasure. Thank you so much. Thank you, everybody. Thank you. Thank Bye. Thanks for Bye. coming, Julie. Take care. Bye.